Our path into the future is unknown. But what is known is that technology's role will only be greater. Artists and institutions have a vital role to play in how we imagine and shape our futures. And this can sometimes mean challenging the ideas and fundamental principles of innovation, as well as its role in society. I think a lot of people feel disconnected from technology. Everyone should have a say. Everyone should have an understanding of how we can collectively organize. This means not just addressing the concerns of today, but projecting how we can fix the future. The theme as eternal networks is such a great way of summarizing the importance of the future. With data, now the world's most valuable resource, mining and misuse poses a threat to our freedoms. At The Shed in New York, a new exhibition, Manual Override, sees artists use their work to ask how we can wrestle back control. What all of those artists have done in this show, Manual Override, is really to take their artistic practice and intersect that with their interest in issues around technology and how an artwork can be born from that interdisciplinary look. The title Manual Override refers to the moment in 80s action films when a piece of technology has gone awry and a lever or a red button appears in which someone can stop the system and save the day. And so my work within technology and with artists who use software I've really found in the last 10 years in conversations that there is no button, there is no lever, and this is really the central problem of our time. And I think a lot of people feel disconnected from technology. Everyone should have a say, everyone should have an understanding of how we can collectively organize and how to talk about these tools and feel facility and comfort with the language around them. The show's curator, Nora Khan, and influential artist Lynn Hirschman Leeson discuss how we can reclaim our digital selves. You're dealing with the issues of your time and the technology is like the way to express the particular issues that didn't exist before. I think literacy around data and data privacy users of contemporary technology will have a very heightened sense of the fact that every time you make a post or post an image that, that information is uploaded and is being used in ways that are outside of your control. So I think the understanding of that and the extent and range of that is a huge part of what needs to be taught. One thing, if people were to understand the loss of themselves and band together to change the direction, I think that you would see a massive change in both in societal values and individual belief in themselves, belief in their system. It's not an easy thing to do, to change a legal structure, to change a society, to make them aware, but it's not impossible. I mean, in my experience, artists are given the challenges of technological design that we are facing right now, which I think the show is hopefully framing. Artists are really at the forefront of revealing that design and that intent. Transmediale draws out new connections between art, culture, and technology. And the title of this year's show nods to some of the key topics that are important to our time now and the future. For us, it's not only about digital art, it's not only about the technology, it's about the cultural transformations that we are undergoing. And uh, I think that's kind of a perspective now that's becoming more and more I think widespread, also after the so-called post-internet art, where a lot of younger artists from growing up with experience of the internet and not knowing any other kind of media reality, basically, and reflecting that in their work, whether it was digital or sculpture or painting. And uh, I think that trend is definitely also here to stay. It's going to become more or less natural to, to have that kind of reflection in your work. Taking a deep dive into the question of networks, experimental art collective KCAN provide their own unique perspectives. The theme of the festival as eternal networks is such a great way of summarizing the importance of the future. For example, there's so many signs of like, 
what's been happening with climate change, yet we've only started to act on upon it because it's become part of popular culture. We're exhibiting here a film called For My Metaverse, which is a CGI film about a hyperfictional future. The narrative of the hyperfictional film is set in a future where the climate crisis has rendered the Earth uninhabitable. What that means is that the humans left on the Earth are kind of forced to inhabit multiple different virtual realities. Isabel Ramos from Art Collective KKEN and Transmediale director Christopher Gansing discuss the limitations and merits of the network. So as a sort of collective practice, our central sort of methodology is world building. And within that, you have multiple narratives operating at the same time. You can also have multiple people working on that story, multiple elements existing in that space. And I think in this creation of this work, we really took that and speculate how they would operate. How does it exist to exist in these multiple spaces? What has been amazing about digital technologies and networks is we practice as an art collective. There's three of us who sort of co-founded it. However, there's people always coming in and out to help kind of grow. And a lot of our development of our practice has been meeting new collaborators has been through online experiences. It's amazing how you can just connect with someone and you've never met them. And that is completely possible through the networks that are there. I think today, in a way, we have maybe reached the limits of the network imaginary as a kind of social technical model of mm -hmm. the world, that we need a more expanded mm -hmm. uh, vision on what a network world can be. We think about more on the general level of yeah. what networks and technology yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of does to society. What you're describing is also, for me anyway, networks as actually organization in itself. Yeah. We need to be more attentive to also how these networks are not simply tools. They are like forms of organization yeah, yeah, that yeah. brings us together in new ways. How is the collision of art and technology driving a new era of art? And how does the concept of the art and tech lab facilitate this? I think it's inevitable that technology is going to play more of a role in the way that experience is mediated in the museum world. Today, we, we see a lot of you know, selfies happening at the museum and that sort of thing. And the way that audiences engage with the museum, they're looking more at their handheld device for information or just to take photos and uh, share and distribute them. But there's other ways also that technology can play a role, whether it's introducing new forms of artwork to audiences that had no idea such technological areas could be of interest to artists. Joel Ferry is joined by lab advisor John Sir, vice president of Hyundai Motor Group's corporate venturing and open innovation center Cradle, and lab artist Kirsten Mosher to discuss the intersection of art and technology. I think we are trying to make a statement that art and technology, they're not always separate. There's a lot more to get out of a conversation when you have both in the room. Technology, at least in the business context, so often is very utilitarian. This program has afforded me the, the opportunity to think about you know, technology used in a different way. I mean, maybe it's forging a new direction in the sense that that which might be considered art is changing and it can be different. And that which could be a typical way of using engineering or technology talent is also changing at the same time. A lot of people don't think of themselves as, you know, their identity isn't, I'm a technology artist. It can be misleading because it's not as much about one's identity or even desire to use high-tech technology. It's more if you're asking questions that are pretty broad and might have a lot of paths. With technology, I mean, you do see a lot happening as far as extending or creating new ways to experience art. I mean, it used to be that it happened only in the museum, but that was yeah. the hallowed place, you know, where you, have to, you come there for the experience and that's it. And over the years, as artists have gotten a hold of new tools, they've expanded. And I think we're kind of just in the beginning of that phase of finding new parameters, new experiences. There's so many different ways now to experience it than, the, than there once was. 
I think the idea of art and technology is that you pair with that tool. The idea of art, which is human creativity, thinking, reflection, self-identity. So you have two kinds of problem solvings, two kinds of progress. And art is our humanity. How else do we even think about humanity of the past except to look at their art? And so if you think of that in the present, art and technology is pairing humanity in, in ways that will make our lives better, will connect more people, will create more equity. We all know that that's not the only possible future we have, but I think by pressing the art agenda within it, it improves the chances um, that our technological future is brighter. The role of art and artists is evolving. And it is clear to see that this collection of artists, curators and creative technologists are encouraging us to question our role in the technological revolution. How will things look different when we participate and help shape the visions we want to see? Technology can be a powerful tool for enhancing our lives. Once we're able to gain control, and avoid the risks. And these collections show how handing over control to artists might just be the best thing we could do. Helping us to connect more, not only with each other, but also ourselves. <laughs>